I'm Molly, if you've been here before, welcome back and thank you so, so much for returning. And if you're new here, welcome, I'm Molly and thank you so, so much for clicking and viewing this video today. Today's video is a bit of a mishmash of all the different books that I have hauled over the past couple of months. I've bought quite a few. Um, I've got a bit mad, I'm not going to lie. I'm coming out of a book, well, a reading slump at the moment I've been in a little bit of a reading slump um kind of towards I go through these like I don't know whether any other bookworms can relate um but I go through these like little dips where like I'll read absolutely loads I'll get loads of books read I'll really enjoy it I can't stop and then it'll get to a point and I'll be like oh my god I need a break and then I find it very hard to get back into reading again um for a little bit so at the moment I'm coming out of a slump and I'm reading and I'm enjoying it. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to smash all of these books very, very quickly, but we will see. Um, I love these kinds of videos because I love seeing what people get. Um, I love seeing what people are into um, and it gives me an idea of what to get myself. Um, most of my books I tend to try and get from um, either like bookshops or independent bookshops. Um, because I want to keep them alive and going so I will try and get books most of my books from them if I can sometimes I'll get them from Amazon because you can get them for really good prices um, where else do I get them from charity shops um, I have recently discovered Costco because of my boyfriend thank you Dan um, and I but well, they do books as well so yeah I have got a few from there, very good prices. Um, so yeah, I just get them from a mishmash of places really, as do sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you what I have picked up and I'll read about them. You might have already heard of most of them, but yeah, hopefully it'll give you some ideas if you haven't. So the first book that I picked up was by an author called Emily Henry and it is Book Lovers. Now I have read, oh my goodness, what was it called? I have read another book by her um, and it is called, do, 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 do. I think she's got three kind of, you know, ones that are quite popular. Um, but this is the newest one. I can't remember what it was called now. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so... I have read her other book, Beach Read, and I very much enjoyed that. And then I've also got downloaded on my Kindle, You and Me on Vacation, but I haven't read that yet. But I quite enjoyed Beach Read. It was a very sort of quick, romantic read, a nice little escape. I very much enjoyed it. But yeah, this is the newish one that I picked up in Asda. And on the back, it says, Nora is a cutthroat literary agent at the top of her game. Her whole life is books. Charlie is an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers, and he's Nora's work nemesis. Nora has been through enough breakups to know she's the one men date before finding their happily ever after. To prevent another dating dud, Nora's sister persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's holiday in Sunshine Falls. Um, it's a small town straight out of a romance novel, but instead of meeting sexy lumberjacks, handsome doctors or cute bartenders, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie. So yeah, this is one of those sort of books that where you, yeah, very quick, can just escape to. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to reading that. That was the first one. Then I picked up this book by Stacey Halls. Now I didn't really think that I'd like Stacey Halls. I believe this one, The Familiars, is an oldish one. Not 100%, but I recently read, I say recently, I think it was last year, um, The Foundling. And it was different for me. It was very different. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy it. So I thought I'd pick this one up and give it a go, but I'll read the back for you. So it's in a time of suspicion and accusation to be a woman is the greatest risk of all. Lancashire, 1612. Fleetwood Shuttleworth is 17 years old, married and pregnant for the fourth time. But as a mistress at Gawthorpe Hall, she still has no living child and her husband Richard, Richard is anxious for an heir. Then she crosses paths by chance with Alice Gray, a young midwife who promises to help her give birth to a healthy baby. When Alice is drawn into the witchcraft accusations that are sweeping the northwest, Fleetwood risks everything by trying to help her. As the legendary Pendle witch trials approach and Fleetwood's stomach continues to grow, time is running out and both their lives are at stake. So yeah, as I said, different for me, but I'm looking forward to reading that. Most people have probably read that already, but yeah, I'm going to give that a go. 
Then I picked up this one by Shelby Maherin, I believe, um, and it's called Serpent and Dove. I saw this peeking at me in Waterstones. Um, I don't think it has much to say. I think it's literally just this little bit on the back, but I believe it says enough. It says, bound as one to love, honour or burn, a witch and a witch hunter thrust into holy matrimony. There was only one way such a story could end, a stake and a match. So yeah, says it all really. Fantasy, romance, forbidden love, right up my street. And then the next one I picked up was another Asda. I believe, I think it was another Asda. This is the Summer That Changed Us by Kathy Bramley. Another little escape. Um, and it's got three women, three secrets, one unforgettable summer. And on the back it says, The sparkling seaside village of Merle Bay, with its beautiful beach scattered with sea glass, is a place where anyone can have a fresh start. For Katie, it is the perfect hideout after a childhood trauma left her feeling exposed. For Robin, the fresh sea air is helping to heal her scars, but maybe not her marriage. For Grace, a new start could help her move on from heartbreaking loss. When they meet on Seaglass Beach one day, they form an instant bond, and soon they're sharing Prosecco, laughter, and even their biggest secrets. Together, the women feel stronger than ever before, so can their friendship help them face old fears and find happy endings, as well as new beginnings? So yeah, you know, just another, another little escapey one. Then this one was... I think this was a second hand one. This is from World of Books actually. Love World of Books by the way. If you haven't tried it, it's not very cheap for new like popular books, but like you have a little look on there, but you can get things second hand and it's relatively cheap. I quite like World of Books. If you haven't tried it, try it. Um, but this is The Sunrise by Victoria Hisloff. And I was interested in this because basically I didn't know very much about the war um, between Cyprus and Turkey, Turkey invading Cyprus. Um, and I went to Cyprus last year and we basically went on a little tour of the old town and the tour guide was telling us like a few snippets about it and I really wanted to learn more. And I can't remember if it was um, my family friends, Sue or Deb, I don't know which one, I think it might have been Sue that suggested this book to me. So I got it off um, World of Books and I'm very excited to read it. Um, I do very much like love books that are factual, but it's the story's kind of made up, if that makes sense. So it's it's the facts, um, but it's like a made up story around it. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this, so I'll read a little bit about it. So in the summer of 1972, Famagusta in Cyprus is the most desirable resort in the Mediterranean, a city bathed in the glow of good fortune. An ambitious couple open the island's most spectacular hotel, where Greek and Turkish Cypriots work in harmony. Two neighbouring families, the Gorgias and the Oscans, are among many who moved to Famagusta to escape the years of unrest and ethnic violence elsewhere on the island. But beneath the city's facade of glamour and success, tension is building. When a Greek coup plunges the island into chaos, Cyprus faces a, dis a disastrous conflict. Sorry, Turkey invades to protect the Turkish Cypriot minority and Famagusta is shelled. 40,000 people seize their most precious possessions and flee from the advancing soldiers. In the deserted city, just two families remain. This is their story. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to read that. Now, the next three are actually all from Costco and got very, very good deals. The first one I picked up is actually a sequel to a book I already have. Haven't even bloody read it yet, like Anana, but I'm going to. This is not the one I picked up. This is the first one. This is um, House of Earth and Blood. Yeah, that's it. So Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. Love Sarah J Mass as an author. This is the first one and I picked up the second one from Costco at a bargain price for a hardback, might I say. So I'm not going to read this one. This is the second one. But I will read the back of the first one. Sorry, the inside of the first one. So it says, Bound by blood, tempted by desire, unleashed by destiny. Bryce Quinlan used to light up Crescent City, partying all night in the clubs where the strict classes of angel shift of human and fame merge into a sea of beautiful bodies, and then a demon murdered her closest friends. Two years later, the supposed killer is behind bars, but the crime start up again. The city's leaders command Bryce. The city's leaders command Bryce to help investigate. They assign an enslaved fallen angel, Hunt Athala, to make sure she does. But as Bryce fights to uncover the truth and resist her attraction to the brooding angel who shadows her every step, 
she finds herself following a, tri a trail that leads deep into her own dark past. So yeah, purchased the second one to that. So I will end up reading those at some point. And then the other two I picked up were by the same author, Beth O'Leary. I finished the flat share last year and I loved it. It was another little like romantic escape, but it wasn't too mushy absolutely loved it so I decided to pick up two more from her I picked up the road trip which says Addie and her sister are on an epic road trip to a friend's wedding in rural Scotland but not long after setting off a car slams into theirs the driver is none other than Addie's ex who she hasn't seen since their traumatic breakup two years earlier Dylan and his best mate are heading to the wedding too, so Addie has no choice but to offer them a ride. And with 400 miles to go, they can't avoid confronting the very messy history of their relationship. Will they make it to the wedding? And more importantly, is this really the end of the road for Addie and Dylan? So yeah, another little romantic escape. And then the last one I picked up was another hardback, Bargain for a Hardback, and obviously Beth O'Leary again, and it's called The No Show, and it says, um, so on the front, it's got three women, three dates, one missing man, and then it's got inside 8.52 a.m. Siobhan is looking forward to her breakfast date with Joseph. She was surprised when he suggested it. She normally sees him late at night in her hotel room. Breakfast on Valentine's Day surely means something. So where is he? 2.43 p.m. Miranda's hoping that a Valentine's Day lunch with Carter will be the perfect way to celebrate her new job. It's a fresh start and a sign that her life is falling into place. She's been dating Carter for five months and things are getting serious, but why isn't he showing up? 6.30pm, Joseph Carter agreed to be Jane's fake boyfriend at the engagement party. They've not known each other very long, but their friendship is fast becoming the brightest part of her new life in Winchester. Joseph promised to save Jane tonight, but he's not there. Meet Joseph Carter, that is, if you can find him. So that's an interesting one and I'm looking forward to reading that. So those are the books that I've picked up over the last couple of months, my little book haul, um, and I will end up reading them one by one at some point. So yeah, I hope it's maybe given you some ideas. If you haven't read those already, you know, you might want to pick a couple of them up if you're into kind of the same stuff as me. So yeah, thank you for your patience and thank you for watching this video. Also, repping but if you like the hoodie <laughs> um this is my boyfriend's band monasteries um and this is their hoodie you can't get this one anymore it's a dark souls one but they're doing the same one but they've like ramped it up a bit it's like a better more improved version should we say um so if you're interested i will pop the link below got a rep haven't you you just got to <laughs> um but yeah so thank you so much for viewing this video today i hope you're having a really great day and i hope you continue to do so and i will be back um take care thank you very much bye